I'm Wayne McCormick, MD. I'm a professor at, in the Department of Medicine here at the University of Washington, and I'm program director for the Palliative Medicine Fellowship. Palliative care includes end-of-life care, but it's not exclusively end-of-life care. It's comprehensive care uh, that's interdisciplinary, meaning lots of different types of providers are involved physicians, pharmacists, nurses, social workers, often spiritual counselors, and others in comprehensive care of a person with life-threatening illness and their family. So some of those people may get well and be cured of their illness, it's just that their illness is life-threatening. A, a palliative care team uh, can deal with almost any aspect of serious illness. Often the first fulcrum of intervention is with pain and symptom management. Uh, and they'll give advice to other primary care teams or uh, if they're managing the case, they'll intervene to make sure that pain and associated symptoms like nausea or shortness of breath, anxiety, those kinds of things are dealt with. Then a lot of the rest of it has to do with counseling and helping people with changes that accompany their illness whatever those are, whether the person is getting better or getting worse and does eventually succumb to their illness. The idea is to counsel them so that they're not afraid as they see changes accrue. I think, you're, I think it is true that the rank and file physicians and nurses are actually pretty good in this community and, and nationwide managing pain. That's not to say that everybody is, uh, and it's also uh, important to point out that sometimes that management is a challenge. And again, the palliative care team really isn't just managing pain. We're managing emotions and grief, uh, bereavement, other more emotional, heart-based things that maybe not all physicians and nurses feel talented in, and they might ask us for help with that. That's actually the more challenging part. The pain management, you know, actually, that's the easy part. Palliative, palliative actually comes from uh, an ancient word that means to cover or cloak or hold. So the idea is you're holding the patient and their loved ones through this event. The idea is to get everybody through the illness in good shape, including loved ones who survive the patient if the patient does die. The idea is for them after the death to grieve appropriately, to not feel guilty or like they did something wrong, to feel like they did the best they could with the information and the help they had. I think it's a hard area for a lot of physicians, and certainly a lot of some physicians do it much better than others. But, you know, most people have actually not seen somebody die, or maybe not have ever seen a dead body. Uh, and we are a death denying society, I suppose that's often said. Uh, but I think at the same time, we are pretty reality based. The palliative care and hospice teams are to ground people in reality. That to hope, you know, for good things to happen, but at the same time to be able to plan and uh, accept when things don't, aren't going so well. I think patients shouldn't necessarily assume that it comes with a package. Uh, it's okay for patients to and families to advocate for that and to ask for that kind of input. So it actually does take kind of a little army of people to do a good job with that in challenging situations. Not all situations are challenging and consequently a lot of patients uh, do very well with life-threatening illness with just their primary provider being essentially the palliative medicine doc.